as I know right now UCAS is open and a lot of you are writing your personal statements, I thought it would be a fun idea to actually go through the personal statement that got me into Oxford and the tips I have, what stuff I would do differently and what I think back then I did very well. So I'm gonna go through that in today's video. If you want to get concrete tips on how to improve your personal statement and how to do this, how to get started, then make sure to watch my other video on personal statements, which was actually my very first video. But the information in there is very good, so I stand by that. But in today's video, we're gonna go through my personal statement that I submitted probably five, six years ago. Um, to be able to get into Oxford and to be able to actually apply to all other universities that I applied to as well. So I think I applied to Imperial, Bath, um, I don't remember the other two, but I know that I applied to those two. But here you can see all of the different universities that I applied to and what the result was the second time round that I applied with this statement. So let's get right into it. So the very first introduction paragraph was What attracts me to engineering is the incredible diversity and ability to adapt to new situations. I believe global warming is the biggest challenge engineering has encountered so far as it has had serious impacts on the environment. That is why the time for another industrial revolution has come where our goal is not only to make life more pleasant, but to reduce the emission of greenhouse gases, lessen pollution and adapt to new circumstances that might arise due to global warming. Already, several interesting solutions have been introduced to tackle the problem, such as electric cars, new types of solar panels, electricity generating floors, and many more. So I remember with this paragraph, my intention was to set the framework for my whole personal statement and to be able to put my experiences in that and what I want to do with engineering later on. So it's a nice framework that I can fit my past experiences and my future aspirations into as well. You will be able to see in the next few paragraphs that I talk about similar things. But also one thing that I think I did very well and looking back, it was a very good thing for me to do is actually include a few different topics that I could talk about during the interviews and it actually gives the interviewers some ground and some topics to talk about. But also I made sure that these are topics that I would be very enthusiastic to talk about or it's some topics that interested me. So for example, it was electric cars, new types of solar panels and electricity generating floors. So these are topics that if the interviewer asked about, I could talk about them on a basic level, but also with a lot of enthusiasm, because then they will see that I am actually interested in the course that I applied to. So during the interview, that helps a lot as well. Overall, I think I did a good job setting up the framework. The introduction and the first sentence is a bit cliche, I have to say. Now looking back, it's quite cheesy to say that is the incredible diversity and ability to adapt to new situations is what attracts me to engineering. But anyways, moving on to the second paragraph that I had. My second paragraph, I was talking about my past experiences. So let's read through that really quickly. My involvement in physics research projects started two years ago when I applied to the Hungarian Young Physicists Tournament. As I won gold medal and was selected into the team representing Hungary at the International Young Physicists Tournament, I had the opportunity to do research on three topics, pot in pot refrigerators, scratch holograms and magnetic brakes. I learned to appreciate how a theory from physics with an engineer's work can help people, even when resources are scarce. The pot in pot refrigerator with which I won silver medal at the International Conference of Young Scientists would help people in developing countries store their food longer just by using clay, sand, a piece of wet cloth and even contaminated salty water. In addition, I published my first article this year on the scratch holograms in the Hungarian physics paper called Physica Istanbul and it has been sent to an international paper as well. This experience gave me some useful insights on how research processes work. During the research, I fell in love with experimenting, making mathematical models of systems, but most importantly, as I stated in the beginning, the diversity of engineering. 
So looking back at this paragraph, I think I did quite a good job at actually listing all of my biggest achievements and the things that I have been most proud of so far because I actually fit it into the framework of diversity of engineering and how actually the process of engineering works. So looking back, even though I hadn't studied engineering and in Hungary we don't have engineering courses in high school, we only have maths or physics, I think I did quite a good job of you know, um, just describing the process of saying, um, doing some mathematical modeling and then experimenting and then also evaluating those. So all in all, I think it really helped me that I had these amazing experiences and looking back, I'm really fortunate to have them because yes, it sounds very impressive to go on international conferences, win medals and all of that. But the most important thing here is the experience and the knowledge it gave me in engineering and in physics. So I'm really glad that I was able to include that and looking back at it, it I think really boosted my personal statements compared to the previous year when I was rejected from a lot of different universities but also my personal statement wasn't as good. Again, I think with this paragraph it was a really good way for me to establish that I already had some experiences in engineering or related fields and I actually know what I'm applying to and I know what I'm getting myself into because one of the things that universities really want is if they admit someone into their course that that person will stay to the end of the course and actually graduate from that university so they really want to have someone who has an understanding of you know what they've done before and what they're applying to what they want to do with it later on instead of someone who just has a vague idea of what the subject is about and then moving on to my third paragraph where I was talking about you know my future aspirations and how it links to the thing that I was doing that year because that year I was actually on a gap year because as I said I had to apply two times the first time I didn't get in so I decided to have a gap year and uh, explore other options currently I'm working on a project to design the mm -mm car at this company which is an environmentally friendly vehicle with a modular design. This enables users to customize their car by choosing parts of it, such as the types of engines. The most interesting thing about the car is that it can run on human power, but does not depend on it. This is the revolutionary idea of the project, as people have built countless vehicles running on human power and ones that run on other energy sources, but this vehicle would combine these technologies. The main idea of the new industrial revolution I mentioned in the beginning plays a great role in our team's way of thinking. We have to mitigate the global warming by reducing pollution and by using sustainable materials and also to adapt to new circumstances like extreme weather. As much as I enjoy thinking about the design, the thing that I am most excited about is the engineering aspect. I hope to learn, get to know new techniques, and gain the knowledge while working on a car. So with this paragraph, I think, again, it was a very good idea for me to link back into the original framework, so it's actually a cohesive personal statement. So I linked back again on the new industrial revolution and how I want materials to be sustainable. Now, they didn't ask much about this car during the interviews, and I think one of the reasons why is it's actually not a very revolutionary idea, um, it also didn't work out, so that's also why I'm not mentioning the name of the company or the name of the product. But um, back then it was a nice way for me and a nice project for me to get to know the basics of engineering and all of the different aspects that goes into designing a product and then getting it out the door. Again, at the end of this paragraph, I reaffirmed my passion for engineering and that it really interests me. I know what I'm talking about, I know what I want to get myself into. And then I also want to do it in the future, thinking about sustainability and all of that. And then this is my fourth paragraph. In my free time, I like cooking, dancing, designing dresses and sewing. In fact, I designed and made 10 dresses and taught dance for my fashion show and dance performance two years ago. I also love learning languages as I am bilingual, Vietnamese and Hungarian, and I speak two more languages, English and French, at an advanced level. 
I also enjoy organizing events, for example, school leaving ceremonies and an event for first graders to get to know the school. Now, looking back at this paragraph, I don't think it's completely wasted, but I also don't think it was necessary to talk about my hobbies and other things, because at the end of the day, the UK universities are slightly different from US schools because they don't put that much emphasis on hobbies and extracurricular activities, but rather they put a lot of emphasis on whether you know what the material of the subject that you're applying for is about. So I could have used these words and um, these paragraphs to talk about how I would want to study engineering in the future or what exactly I would want to study, what type of engineer I would want or how I myself would help with the global warming aspect or sustainability aspect of engineering if I were to graduate with an engineering degree later on. So I could have done that instead of talking about my hobbies but I also think it's not too out of the framework um, the way I put it in here. And then lastly, I believe my passion and interest will help me with my studies in the field of engineering. The project I have worked on convinced me that engineering is truly the path I want to follow and I hope to be able to participate in many more in the future to help both people and our home, the earth. These projects have been challenging and rewarding and I hope the ones in the future will be too. Now, I really like the summary that I wrote. I think, again, it's really good for me to link back into the sustainability framework that I set up in the beginning by saying that I want to help the people and the earth, which is our home. Um, and also reaffirming that, again, I have this experience and as I said many times before, I know what I want to get myself into. So all in all, this was my personal statement. Looking back at it now, five years later, um, my plans have changed slightly. Now I'm working more in software, robotics, um, control systems, so that became my specialization instead of strictly doing something with energy or sustainability. But all in all, you know, even though it's not strictly sustainability, it's something that's really important to keep in mind anyway because sustainability is something that's prevalent in all kinds of engineering and not just the type that I thought before. Now, it's also important to say that I myself thought that I would become a mechanical engineer or a civil engineer, but at the end, that was not what I wanted. And I realized that after my second year of university, so I did choose to specialize in more um, kind of software related and more purely mathematical related um, subjects. Reading it back, I don't think it was a bad personal statement. Obviously, there are things that I would do differently if I would go back in time, but um, that's why this video is here to help you to not make these mistakes and also be able to write a good personal statement. Um, as you can see, the way that I worded things are also very casual. I didn't use overly fancy language. So it's also a style that I speak in anyways. Um, and I think it's really important to keep that in mind, especially if you're an international student, because if you hire someone else to do it, or if you try to use words that you don't use normally, then at the interview stage, it will look like someone else wrote it for you. And that is not a very good impression to make. So make sure to keep an eye out for that as well. But also, as I said, check out my two other videos on university applications and the personal statement to be able to get a really good personal statement in. So subscribe to see more videos in the future on productivity, university applications, language learning, career, all of that. And make sure to like this video to show your support. Also comment below of what you think about my personal statement and what you would do differently. And let me know if you have any other questions. And I'll see you guys next week. Bye bye.